Recently, I've been asked how I would do a mounted archer build. And the thing about mounted archer builds is you just do a solid archer and then you get a mount. I think the easiest way to do that is to take the ritual caster feat and then look for phantom steed throughout your career. Once you find it, you will always have a mount that is really reliable. However, we've now given up one of our feats. So if we are a feat heavy build, that's gonna hurt. If we're not, should be okay. Now that really informed why I made the choices I made. I could do a sharpshooter build. Sharpshooters make excellent archers, but I didn't want to for a couple different reasons. One, it's, it's over used, I wanted to do something a little bit more creative. And two is that I don't want to be feet hungry. That's taking two feet, which means our stats are going to get behind a little bit. So I wanted to focus more on take that one mounted combatant feet and then everything else kind of round out before taking more feet. So what I came up with was the mounted spell bow. In order to play the mounted spell bow, we're going to want to be a variant human. We're going to be taking a plus one in our intelligence and plus one in our constitution. And then we're going to be taking ritual caster wizard. We're going to want to make sure we have 14 in dexterity because we are going to be rocking that medium armor. And then we're going to take intelligence as our primary and constitution as our secondary. Our first five levels are going to go into Battlesmith, then we're going to go three into Arcane Archer, and we're going to go back into Battlesmith for the rest of our career. Levels one and two, we're going to really need a, an attack-based cantrip, so we'll take Firebolt to get us through levels one and two, but once we get Battlesmith at level three, we're going to want to give up on our Firebolt because we're going to be using our bow instead, and so you can trade it out as an artificer for another spell that you like. There's a lot of variability in what you can do with invocations, but two of them that really stand out to me is Enhanced Weapon. It's going to make our weapon more accurate and deal more damage, which is really important important as an archer. And the next one is spell rot tattoo find familiar. What's really good about this one is you don't have to take it every day because you just take it on the days you don't have a familiar and then you cast find familiar and then get rid of it for the next day. Perfect for downtime. We'll be standing in the back line and sniping while our still defender runs up there and kind of creates the front line with our teammates. As for our ASIs, we're going to definitely want to max out our intelligence, but sharpshooter is also really strong with this build. I'm personally going to be going the max out intelligence route first and then worry about sharpshooter later. During these early levels, fairy fire is going to be our best spell because it's going to set us up as well as our teammates. So we'll probably start our combat out with it as our fight winning spell and every archery attack we have can potentially be at advantage. Once we hit level five, we're going to get multi-attack as well as web. Web is huge on this build. It does the same thing as fairy fire, but it also controls and allows us to kite more. So here we've already established our fighting style. At the beginning of combat, we're going to cast our fight winning spell. Then we're going to use our excellent mobility and kiting to run around the battlefield and do lots of damage. Level six through eight, I'm going into fighter. Getting the archery fighting style on top of our enhanced weapon means our weapon is really, really powerful. And also action surge synergizes amazing with our play style because on that first turn, now we can do web action surge do our next attack and that attack can get really powerful with arcane archer the main thing with arcane archer is we want grasping arrow grasping arrow is so powerful so now they're they're put into this web and then we hit them with a grasping arrow so now they have two things wrapping them up and they have to make two saves against things that take two actions so they get really really stuck think about the kind of catch 22 we're putting them in let's say they succeed the save against web and now they're wrapped up because they don't get a save against our grasping arrow now what are their options they have reduced movement speed and difficult terrain so they can't can't even escape the web. So now they have to use their action to pull off the grasping binds or to use it to dash. If they want to get out of the web, they have to dash. If they want to get out of the grasping arrow, they have to use their action for that. Then at the beginning of their next turn, they're going to have to make the save against web again. So it's really, really sticky. But what if they fail the web save? Well, now they're stuck in both the grasping binds as well as web, and they need two actions to fully escape that situation. They might use their action to escape the web, but now they're in the same situation they were in before without the ability to take off the grasping arrow or dash. So now they move, take damage, and they're still stuck in the web. The synergy between those two abilities is really, really high, and, and action surge really enables us to get it off really quick. As for our other arrows, I would take situational ones. I might take the bursting arrow if I want some help with dealing with groups of enemies, or I might want the seeking arrow if I want to be able to track invisible creatures. So there's the grasping arrow is your main, and then everything past that is utility. And I actually want to talk about that for a second, that Arcane Archers are seen as pretty garbage because they only ever get two arrows per short rest, but that's six arrows a day. And those arrows require our enemies to deal with them with their action. If we looked at an ability that said you can take six of their actions a day just by hitting them with an attack, we would say that's a good ability. Well, Grasping Arrow is basically that plus stuff on top of it. It's really strong. And I think really underappreciated in the community just how strong it is. The cool thing about this build as well is that we are really focusing on getting our intelligence high, which means that both Grasping Arrow and web are going to be as sticky as they possibly could be. So they may be using actions to not escape them. So when I say six actions are wasted, 
that's minimum. And just take a moment here to appreciate how powerful Sharpshooter will eventually be. In between web and fairy fire, we're gonna have advantage a lot. And in between our archery fighting style and our enhanced weapon, we have a plus three to a plus four to hit. Sharpshooter is gonna be really powerful when we decide to take it. Going back into Artificer is gonna give us the incredible Flash of Genius. Flash of Genius is the reason I'm not really rushing getting Resilient Wisdom. Although Resilient Wisdom will still be a good investment after we get Sharpshooter and get our intelligence maximized. We also get Bracers of Archery to increase our archery damage output. Like our archery skills are just fantastic. We're eventually gonna get our improved enhanced weapon, which is gonna make it a plus two, plus two weapon. Fantastic. And then we're gonna get spell storing items. Spell storing item can be combined with our familiar to let our familiar cast our web for us. So now we don't need action surge every single turn. We can shoot somebody with our grasping arrow, then right after our familiar can cast web on top of them. So we can begin every combat in our ideal way. Now this is the core of our play style, but diving a little bit deeper, we also make a great roguelike. We have a decent dexterity, and if we get proficiency in stealth combined with our expertise in thieves tools. Furthermore, out of combat, we make excellent utility casters. We took ritual caster wizard, which is the most broad spell list there is to do a whole bunch of things, including Liaman's tiny hut. We can eventually get fine familiar, though I wouldn't take it originally because spell rot tattoo covers it. So that lets us take something like detect magic and so on and so forth. Just keep an open mind about what you can do as a utility caster with this build. So what are we? Well, we specialize in single target control and damage. But on top of that, we have options for crowds. We have great defenses, both with our AC and our saves, especially once we get Flash of Genius. Overall, we're really well-rounded with no glaring weaknesses, uh, with our highest weakness being our wisdom saves until we get those taken care of later. Now, this has just been my take on the Horse Archer. I would love to hear what you guys would do. Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to show support to the channel as well as get some awesome benefits, consider checking out our Patreon. But other than that, my friends, I hope you have yourselves an incredible day and I'll catch you on the next one. See you then.